Hey guys, this is CM1159PS, uh, also known as Chris. Taking a lot of pictures of my tank, thought I'd show you some video. Bought this tank about 12, 13 years ago. Uh, has a nice whitewash cabinet, came with a matching canopy, uh, which unfortunately I couldn't use when I converted this from fresh water to salt. It's been a fresh water tank, you know, since I got it. Just set this tank up on March 19th, 2011, uh, using all dry rock and dry sand. <clears throat> For starters, you have the four bulb Aquatic Life T5 fixture. It's my first fixture like this. I like it as one cord, nothing to do, it's fully programmed. Um, Lights turn on and off by themselves. Uh, there's a mixture of rock in here. There's probably about 75 pounds of assorted assorted bulk reef supply dry rock. I think I have every kind that they offer. Just wanted to see what they look like. So I just got a whole bunch of every kind. I think my favorite is the Pukani, which is a piece just like this. Okay, I have four power heads in the tank. There's one on the bottom back there shooting straight across the back of the tank. Another one right there. Another one blowing towards the surface. And then the fourth one is right there. They are 425 gallon per hour. They're not all on at the same time thanks to my Apex controller. You now they cycle through. Uh, then you have my Life Reef Overflow with the return, of course. Uh, the back of the Life Reef Overflow. Of course, going down to that mess of the sump down below. I have that white PVC coming from the coming through the wall. Uh, actually, it's just three quarter inch PVC. There's nothing going, uh, there's actually five RO lines, quarter inch RO lines coming from the wall inside the pipe, and it drops down that T, and they go towards my sump. Uh, from the left hand side of the T to the tank, there's nothing there, I just use it to support the, uh, the PVC so it's not, you know, tugging on the wall here, and I also use it to uh, tie up my drain line for my overflow box just to take some of the uh, you know the strain and pressure off you know since it's just acrylic I didn't want to crack it I figure you know you take some pressure off it should help of course just the airline tubing going down the overflow uh, the black line in here the black wire is just a conductivity probe for the apex And then back there, I installed a little computer fan, also controlled by the Apex. Once the temperature of the tank gets too high, that fan comes on. Uh, Apex, Apex display unit, I have not, uh, you know, mounted on the wall yet. A couple of books. Take it inside the sump under the tank. Ah, uh, you have the... Hard to see, but you have the Life Reef over, uh, excuse me, Life Reef protein skimmer. There's the two filter cylinders. And of course, the fuge. I do have some red slime in there. Uh, like I said, the tank was only set up about two months ago. Still working on that, trying to get rid of it. I have some Kato in there. There's a bunch of sorted size pods in there. Some little snails that I noticed. I have two 75 watt heaters in here. You know, I started this tank up at the beginning of the spring, so it really hasn't gotten cold. And I've noticed that the heaters really have not kicked on as of yet. So I don't know if it's just because I have so many pumps running in here. You know, mixed with the warmer temperature, air temperature. So, interested to see what it looks like, uh, you know, in the winter. Here's a return compartment for the sump. I actually have 
three pumps in there. Uh, one is a Mag 9 feeding the return and the fuge. You can see it teed off right there, those two ball valves. I have a Mag 5 which is feeding the uh, cylinders up here. One cylinder contains some bulk reef supply Rox Carbon, the other one contains some Fosban, Phosphate Remover. Uh, it's just a Mag 9 feeding the protein skimmer. Now the third pump that I have in here with the white PVC on it, with that elbow on it, is actually a drain pump with these, this black uh, RO tubing. That's going up. Let me take it back here. You can see that braided vinyl tubing coming down, wrapping around, coming out here. Uh, that's going back to that 90 PVC fitting behind the tank. Uh, you'll see I have the three RO lines coming out. I just need to trim them. Uh, <clears throat> the white one is going to be for my alkalinity dosing. The clear one is going to be for calcium dosing. Uh, the black one is a drain pump for the sump. I actually have two other lines uh, further up this vinyl tubing. One is for top off water and one is for salt water. So since I have the Apex controller, you can see all the devices down here, the energy bars, breakout boxes. At 4 o'clock every day, that pump there, the drain pump activates. It pumps a gallon of water out of my sump into that PV sitting, that TPVC uh, fitting behind the tank, goes up the wall up into the attic, across the living room, and in that closet in there I have some PVC going outside of the house into a dry well that I dug last year. Uh, wasn't for this, it was to divert some rainwater from the gutters, but I figured why not use that? We have cesspools here, didn't want to put you know, any more water in the cesspools, I didn't have to, especially that it was salt water, didn't want to kill any bacteria in there. Uh, if you can see in the back, I have a pink zip tie and the green zip ties. Those are float switches. Once that, uh, the float switch with the pink zip tie, once that activates, well, that's going to activate when the water level in the sump here gets a little too low. And then it's going to activate a pump that's sitting in my garage, pump some fresh RO water into the sump keep the salinity you know pretty consistent the one with the green zip tie is just a you know a backup just in case something happens with the the first one just a fail safe uh, also going back to the drain it's on for 10 minutes so probably after 10 minutes it probably drains about a an inch in the sump here which I've uh, I actually pumped it into a uh, milk co container. Uh, so that's how I know it took about 10 minutes to drain a gallon of water because it filled up the milk container in about a 10 minutes. Again, it's about an inch here. After 10 minutes, the apex activates my new salt water pump that is sitting in the garage. Pumps fresh salt mix, you know, through that braided PVC, t braided vinyl tubing here. Comes right out, drops into the sump and it stops working, well, it, the pump shuts itself off once it reaches the proper level in the sump here. Uh, the sump level is just running a little high right now, only because I was didn't catch the skimmer, and uh, salt level was a little, little low, so I just added a little more salt water, trying to bring it up a little bit. Um, as far as what's in the tank, like I said, I started this about Two months ago, using all dry rock, dry sand, just threw two little cocktail shrimp into the sump down here. It took about five weeks for everything to finally cycle out, all my readings zeroed out. 
When that was done, I did a little water change, tested things again a couple of days later. Everything was still good to go. That's when I got my cleanup crew. I got four Astria snails back there. There's four scattered around the tank. I got four reef hermits. I did get that firefish as well. And if I could find them, I got two little peppermint shrimp as well, which like to be hiding out right now. Let's see, there's one. So I got those guys about three weeks ago. About two weeks ago, I got some corals from a local reefer. He gave me a couple of green pallies. There's four heads on here. I think there's about nine heads in total on here, on an oyster shell. Uh, he also gave me some rock. It's a green hairy mushroom rock. Little frag of frog spawn. Uh, orange digitata. It's not looking too hot right now. Uh, I still have the stock bulbs that came with the fixture. I do have some new bulbs coming tomorrow. Some ATIs, which should, you know, help that color up, hopefully. That was a green money with a purple rim. That's supposed to be a grape digitata. Uh, also, I got the peppermints because I got this one little piece of live rock about three weeks into the cycle. Uh, a couple of days after I added it, I noticed some aptasia. Uh, that was probably about two or three weeks before I added the cleanup crew. Added two peppermint shrimp, and about three days later, I haven't seen the aptasia, and it's been gone ever since. And that. By now, it's probably about three weeks ago. That's about it right now. I'm currently doing some research, research, seeing what I want to add next, what kind of fish I want to add. Just taking my time, doing it slow. That's about it. Feel free to comment if you have any questions, any suggestions for me. Um, all ears. Thanks a lot, guys.